Native people, Native culture, Native knowledge. Hi, I'm Jeannie Green, bringing you award-winning Heartbeat Alaska. Bringing you national and international Native news, this is award-winning Heartbeat Alaska, the premier Native voice in Native programming. There's a heartbeat loud as thunder Revolution is in the Heartbeat Alaska, here's Jeannie Green. Hello everyone and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska, Native news and Native information. I'm Jeannie Green. This time of year, the eye of the world is on Alaska because of our famous Iditarod race. Well, there are races in other parts of the state at this time of year as well. We travel to Ekwok, Alaska for their sixth annual Women's Sled Dog Race Championship. We also learn about the outrage of the local citizens of Ekwok from the wanton waste of meat by outside hunters. We'll visit with Ekwok, Alaska right after this. Teeny! Say hi. 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 BP is proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. BP, going the extra mile. By the Nature Conservancy of Alaska working with Alaska's rural communities to conserve and protect our natural heritage. Heartbeat Alaska thanks Wave Wholesale Company, your one-stop supply source for village retail stores, food service customers, and government agencies. Welcome aboard, Wave. Heartbeat Alaska chooses the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And this is where we choose to house our guests that come from all over the world to spend time with us. And this is where we hope you will choose to spend your time when you come to Anchorage. Choose the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska thanks Era Aviation for sponsoring us through our stories. Era Aviation, serving Anchorage, Cordova, Homer, Iliamna, Kenai, Kodiak, Valdez, Whitehorse, and 20 Western Alaska villages from Bethel. Thank you, Era Aviation. We appreciate your sponsorship. Visit Era Aviation at www.eraaviation.com. This time of year, the focus of the world is on Alaska because of our famous Iditarod race. However, there are other races taking place in parts of the state. One of those races is in Ekwok, Alaska. Going out was really good. It was uh, really easy. But coming back in was, uh, was uh, really tense, meeting other mushers. Um, I thought it was going to be a good, clean run. Uh, when I ran into other mushers, I got all tightened up and I was uh, nervous. Debbie Weedman is one of 17 female athletes who gathered for the sixth year in a row to compete in the grueling sport of dog mushing. The sixth annual Women's Sled Dog Championship race attracted mushers from surrounding villages to Ekwok, Alaska. <laughs> yeah, just three ladies. Please. You almost passed her right here. I, I, I could have passed her back there two or three times. Ekwok is located along the Nushagak River, 43 miles northeast of Dillingham, and 285 miles southwest of Anchorage. Ekwok means end of the bluff and is the oldest continuously occupied Yupik Eskimo village on the river. During the 1800s, the settlement was used in the spring and summer as a fish camp, and in the fall as a base for berry picking. 
By 1923, it was the largest settlement along the river. In 1930, a BIA school was constructed. Mail was delivered by dog sled from Dillingham until a post office opened in 1941. Like most Alaskan villages, Ekwok is a small, quiet place, a community where locals still visit each other, sharing stories of yesterday. They didn't have winter carnivals back then. Some things were the same, though. When there were no stores around, moose was pretty important, wasn't it? It is. You, you, you had uh, meat, you know. You had a good meat. You'd get the uh, moose in the fall when they're nice and fat. It's really nice meat, you know. You get one in the wintertime, and moose is barely uh, making it, you know. They're very skinny, you know. Uh, and the meat is not so good as it is in the fall, you know, when they're real fat, you know. Uh, eating and really good meat. Meat has lots of fat on it, healthy moose, yes. As the race gets underway and the dogs pull fiercely on the harnesses, another race is taking place in this community. The race to stop wanton waste of caribou and moose by outside and non-guided hunters. According to Jimmy Hurley, the carnage is too great to ignore. You know, I estimated last year maybe about a million pounds wasted. So, you know, that's just my estimate. With with them taking the quarters out, there's still a million pounds of meat left out there. So, you know, there's no. You know, there's it's still there's it's still a problem. This carnage waste leaves some residents with only a portion of their share or doing without. Well, we got one last fall and uh, we're almost done with it. We're almost finished with it. And it's uh, February, so, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, we're almost, my, our, my freezer's almost gone. It's almost empty. Yeah. It's been hard for Louie and I to get, uh, you know, meat for our freezer fall time. You know, looking for moose before uh, winter comes. We hardly could find anything during the fall. We struggled for, we just got, this is our first moose we got in, I say, five years. So I think that uh, non-residents, uh, hunters, should give the uh, village people the meat, especially our elders. More our elders than um, we, uh, at home, we think of our elders more. Well, some of them just hunt for the, hunt, hunt for the horns, that's all. They, they can't eat the horns. People can't eat the horns. They want the meat, and they all want the bones. They said, uh, leave the bones. Well, now, uh, with the bones, you got to get the bones there, and you can make soup put in there all winter out of it. And when I went hunting with the natives, by golly, they even saved the blood. They even saved the blood on the moose, you know. They'd take a cup and save the blood even. They made soup out of it or something, you know. A lot of the waste is uh, <coughs> done by non-resident hunters. The other people, uh, they just shoot them and they just take the horns. And you come to the airports and you see all these horns. And I asked where the meat is, and boy, they didn't like the, them guys. They didn't like that. And you ask them where the meat was. The meat was out in the woods, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. With subsistence being a major issue in this state, any wasted meat is an outrage. Then I went up there for a where they always camp. Uh, then I, I stopped there and make tea. I was there in a uh, half hour to try to make my tea get hot. Uh, when I have a smell something and uh, I walk around, I walk around behind that. that lots of meat in the waste inside the brush. Really moldy, really fat. Just it have no head. 
No horns, nothing is. Never even uh, take the meat off and the waste them on for those. A few years ago, we had a lot of this waste of caribou, and uh, I brought it before our committee. And this, uh, we put in regulations that, uh, that everybody getting caribou had to take from, from the field four quarters of the caribou. There was so much waste left out there. And uh, it came out of our advisory committee, and I'm the guy who brought this up. Uh, and uh, it took a lot of, a lot of time and effort to uh, get this passed, you know. I think uh, with other people, with other, with help from other people, but uh, want and waste issue was so bad at that time that uh, there could have been more done, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not, uh, there's something on the books now that says, you know, there's, it, it was a real big issue. I know you're not officially a biologist and uh, you might not be able to give the scientific figure and uh, but how long do you think it would take to get the herds back up to the level where the village is the residents in this village or residents in any village? Oh, no, the caribou herds is really grown really lots with with the growth and more hunters coming in there's more waste. In the 19, 1980, 1989 uh, you know, it, it, this uh, subject was brought before a gathering, and we talked about it. Uh, but uh, they told us that we got to be able to have some kind of a VCR or a film of what was happening and show proof that we got to we see this being done. But as a uh, Resident Hunter in the Nusiak and the Molchatna. There is a want and waste uh, issue that has affected and been, uh, you know, uh, and was going on for for the last uh, almost 30, 40 years, and nothing has been done about it, and nothing has been, you know, it it, it has been talked about, and. Uh, but it's not not uh, not really taken care of, and uh, you know the outside hunters they come to an area and uh, and they'll uh, hunt a moose or a caribou, and sometimes the season is uh, damp and wet, and they will uh, don't know uh, uh, how long the meat will uh, will be able to keep and uh, they'll get rid of it and uh, but uh, you know it's just uh, it has been uh, affected our area in, in the last 30 to 40 years and uh, we have done uh, you know the talking but uh, nothing has uh, has been done but uh, it's seen, it's I see I've seen waste a lot of waste it's it's terrible, cause uh, you know that could be food for uh, maybe my family or my grandma's family, my uncle. Uh, it's just just sad to see you know good meat like that go to waste, and you know that's our everyday. Um, that's our food. Uh -huh. So you know what you're doing, what what, how to take the meat out, rather than doing a, going on a 10-day float trip. You turn around and uh, you get the moose the first day. You're going to be floating with that meat for eight days, and ain't going to be very good by the time you get there. You don't know how to preserve it, especially in non-residents. Uh, they should be guided by you know that that should be in regulation. I would really stress to all the other villages to step up to the plate and. Uh, get resolutions to their legislators. Don't go away. There's more Heartbeat Alaska right after this. <laughs> Support for this program provided by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We've been here since before Alaska was a state, and we'll be here when you need us. 
We're here. We're with you. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. This program is sponsored in part by Phillips Alaska. Dreamers who make it happen. I like to dream. My daughter wants to learn the ways of my mother. She wants to know the nesting grounds of the goose. She wants to know when the red salmon will return to the rivers. The gift of past experience is handed down. There are no greater lessons. Years ago, the foods we Aleuts gathered were naturally healthy. Nowadays, even though we don't eat as many traditional foods, they're still a big part of my family's meals. By combining our traditional foods with a few healthy store-bought foods, we can have a great meal. Ah, don't you agree? Brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska, Merck, and Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium. The Ekwok Carnival is an exciting event for many people in this area. The first place prize for the 6th Annual Women's Sled Dog Race Championships was $2,500 plus a trophy. Second place, $1,800 plus a trophy. Third place, $1,500 plus a trophy. And then on minus $100 increments. Some of the activities every year are the turkey shoot and then, of course, activities for children's outdoors like the coffee can race. Run around the building, the first get there gets the prize. Okay, let's light up the next age group. Uh, Show Joseph. Up. Let's light five canvas. Five. Uh, Who's all you running? Nice. <laughs> Not in front of the camera, please. Yeah, you little shit. Yeah, you're all good, right? Come on, come on. Hey, come on. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. 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 Hurry, come on. Hurry, hurry. Come on. Come on. Yeah, get it. Yeah, get it. You have to run all around the school. Okay, oh, are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three, go. I came to Equoc two years ago. It was my first experience with uh, dog mushing. I really enjoyed it because I got to race against Libby Riddles, but I never got to see her on the trail. <laughs>
My muscles strong. Being active is healthy, whatever your age. After all, honest can still pick berries. Sometimes better than granddaughters. <laughs> Keep busy. Exercise like me. Kiki, you do it. Brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska, Merck, and Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium. Hi, my name is Deborah Vo, and I'm the Executive Director for the Alaska Intertribal Council, a statewide organization advocating for Alaska's tribal governments. The final draft Millennium Agreement is ready for signature by Alaska's Governor Tony Knowles and those, Alaska, those federally recognized tribes who wish to sign on. The purpose of the agreement has three objectives. First, to enhance and improve the communication between the state of Alaska and Alaska's tribes. Secondly, to help facilitate the resolution of potential conflicts that may arise between the state and the tribes. And finally, most importantly, to work toward greater understanding and respect and support for tribal self-governance and self-determination. For Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Deborah Bowe. Thank you for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska, Native News and Native Information. If you have any story ideas, give us a call. Better yet, email me at geniegreen at ak.net. Check out our website, won't you, at geniegreen.com. Thank you once again for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Oh, God bless you. Remember, you are loved. Just speaking last Mohican in real life. Love your wife.
my neighbor do yourself the favor when the words fall down you're looking like a clown ain't no one gonna say that they'll take back what they gave you it's like that like that so when you want the dream yeah, oh, long summer nights falling in love don't never want to part no never want to say goodbye Relocated from our home 